You're listening to Crossroads Church with Pastors Marcus and Natalie Avalos. The following message was recorded live at our Sunday morning services. For more information, go to www.crossroadsc.com or visit us in one of our Sunday morning services at 8.30, 10, and 11.30. And now prepare your hearts as we receive this morning's message. Well, maybe. Good morning, church. Uh, It is good to see you this morning. My name is Roy Cervantes, and I get the privilege of serving as your worship pastor um, here at Crossroads. And and I couldn't be more pleased uh, to be here with you this morning as we launch our new series, I Love My Church. And uh, man, I want to let you know, if you are here, uh, maybe you're watching online from home, or uh, or maybe you're on vacation with your family, I want to say welcome to you and that you belong here uh, this morning. And so uh, I was looking at that video and, and, and just thinking, this isn't my notes or anything like that, but uh, I think Pastor Marcus should bring back the, the mustache uh, because I think, I think he looks really good uh, in it. <laughs> but, <laughs> and Natalie says no. Uh, um, yeah, but in our announcement videos, and, and if you didn't notice, there are a lot of things that are going on in the life of our church uh, as we come into the summer season. Uh, man, we have a men's golf tournament. Um, our, our women's retreat is coming up. The women's gala is coming up. Uh, we have fundraisers for our, our women's ministry and our student ministry. There are so many things that are happening, and I want to encourage you to go to our, web, our website, snoop around a little bit, check what's going on, um, and get involved and, and get plugged in. Uh, man, and I could not be more pleased and more excited to get to stand before you this morning um, and get to share um, and preach the Word of God um, this morning as it, as it pertains to us and worship. So I was thinking through um, this week of, about a story uh, that I wanted to share with you. And, and, and if, you're a, if you're in the worship scene, um, uh, everybody wants to know your, your highlights, right? Your best, your best worship moments, they want to know that. And then if you're within the inside circle, um, my closest friends, they always want to know um, what is your most embarrassing moment. Uh, and so we're going to grow a little bit closer. I decided to share two stories with you. So uh, last year, I had the opportunity to lead worship with Fuge uh, Camps. And Fuge has, man, like 25 locations across the U.S. It's incredible. Um, they pour into the lives of students. Um, and hundreds and hundreds of students are saved uh, every single summer through Fuge Camps. So Fuge Camps. Fuge Camps gets to pour into the lives of students every single uh, every single summer, and, it, and it's incredible, and we had the opportunity to lead seven weeks last semester across the U.S. It was, it was amazing, and we're in the seventh week. We're in Louisiana, the swamp of Louisiana. Um, it's hot. Uh, we're tired, but we're excited. It's the last week of camp. Students are the most hyped that we've seen them, and we're going into the first song, and it's really high energy, right? We're jumping around. I don't have a guitar on. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's awesome, and, and all of a sudden, I begin to feel like a little breeze a little draft on my leg and I'm like okay that's kind of weird uh I didn't think anything through of it right and there's this little boy um over here at the front of the stage and he's like trying to get my attention I'm like bro like do you not understand what's going on right now like can you pay attention hello uh <laughs> he's like bro come here and so I kind of come over in the middle of the song during like a little break of the song he goes your pants are ripped and I said what and I looked down and sure enough from like my zipper almost down to my knee is this massive rip. Apparently I just jumped too hard and my old Navy joggers gave out and that was it. Um, And it's just like my entire leg is bare for these students as we're leading worship. And and I'm, I'm like, okay, well, I do the only thing that I know what to do in an embarrassing situation and it's you push through, right? You finish the song. And so we finish the song, the band is about to go through the second song. And my producer gets on in my ears, and he's like, Roy, get off of the stage. You have a hole in your pants. Get off. So I run off stage. Uh, The band gets through the second song. Um, I run back to the dorm, grab a new pair of pants in time for the third song, where I get to stand mortified in front of uh, laughing students and, and, (laughs) and a bunch of adults and leaders that are like, I cannot believe I brought my kids to camp here this summer uh, for that. <laughs> luckily, luckily, I was wearing kind of a long shirt, um, and so everything that was important was covered, and we're, we're, we're good. Uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely the most embarrassing moment in worship. Ooh, it's almost fall off the stage. Uh, I, I almost had another one. Uh, <laughs> definitely the most embarrassing moment 
of worship for me. And, and, and then a top moment for me, uh, just a couple of years ago, we were leading, I get the opportunity to uh, get to serve the Capital C Church in a lot of different ways. And one of those ways is I get calls from youth pastors um, a lot that say, hey, I would love to bring you in um, to lead worship for my student ministry. And so we're leading a, a retreat up in Waxahachie um, near Dallas. Um, and it was awesome. And it just so happened that at this retreat, uh, the government approached the camp and said, hey, we are out of space. We have about 800 undocumented minors that we need a place to house them. And so these are minors from Central America, Mexico, South America, even from like Asia. Um, they're all under the age of 17. Uh, they don't have their parents. Um, and they're being housed, uh, but they're out of space. And so they asked the camp to do it. And so through God's favor, uh, we got permission to lead a worship service for these minors in all Spanish. And y'all, like, the, the Latino blood runs in my veins, but I'm also, like, I learned how to be white in Dallas. And so I can't remember, <laughs> I can't remember the last time that I led in Spanish. Um, and so my dad got to preach in Spanish. And here's the cool thing. My dad is a 25-year uh, retired uh, Border Patrol agent. And so he spent um, his life um, detaining people like these kids. Um, he knows where they came from. He knows everything that they've been through. He knows all of the process that, processes that they've been through. And he got to preach the gospel. We got to lead worship um, in Spanish. And kids were broken. Um, kids were saved. Um, and it was incredible. Um, and you, you're talking about a couple of hundred, and by this time it was all, it was all males, um, undocumented minors that got to realize and meet Jesus. And it was incredible, y'all. It was incredible. I, I, I wish I had the words to, to, to explain to you um, how amazing that was. And, and, and there, are high, there are high and low moments um, in, uh, in my life of leading worship. And these are just some of them, right? And, and in reality, your stories, you have highs and lows in your worship to God. Maybe they're not as embarrassing as mine, uh, but you have highs and lows. And, and even in this church, right, um, in, in how far Crossroads has come over the past almost 11, 12 years, um, th there have been highs and lows in our worship to God, uh, but, but it doesn't end there, and it, and it never ends there. And if somebody were to ask me uh, if to, to define worship, I would say it would be our response to God's revelation. It, it would be our response to God showing himself, right? That's our worship. So I want to dive into three ways that God reveals himself today, and... Um, and keep in mind that these aren't the only, the, the only ways. Like, God can reveal himself to you while you're cutting the grass the way he did to me yesterday. Um, that's not my favorite time, but, <laughs> but, but he does, right? Or, or maybe you were around during the new year, and um, a lot of us here, God revealed himself through a word. And you see your word on our expect outside. God, God reveals himself in multiple ways, but I think these are the three most consistent ways that God reveals himself and what our response should be. So... The first one um, that we see God revealing himself, and I think it's the most common, is through art, and, and even more commonly through song, right? And, and it's only appropriate that I, as a worship pastor, start here. But Psalm 150, and it'll be on the screen, it says, <coughs> excuse me, it says, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the very last psalm, and, and I love that the psalms end here. And, and there's a pastor in Atlanta, Georgia. His name is Louis Giglio, and he says, Worship is simply giving God his breath back. When we worship and when we sing, we're using the breath that God put in our lungs originally and giving him praise and proclaiming truths about him because he is good and because he is faithful. Uh, we praise the giver of our breath. And, and, and there's something that's about singing that's profoundly powerful, right? Humans love to be around 
music. And it does something to us physically, emotionally, spiritually. We're, we're, we're creatures that love to be around and participate in music. And it's good. And it's a gift from God. And, and, and even beyond a gift, it's commanded 50 times in scriptures to sing. Uh, it, it's so good to sing. And, and, and for some of us, this is the best part of our week, right? When, when you come into church or you come to night of worship um, and the band is playing songs that you know and love and it makes you feel good and it evokes good emotion, right? right? This, is our, this is our highlight. Or maybe it's been like the worst week ever and you just want to get through this week and you come into church and the band is playing it as well and the tears just start coming. You, you, you know, like these are the best moments, right? And it invokes good emotion. It's the best of the best. Now, I'd be naive to think that this is everybody's favorite form of worship. And I know there are probably some men in here um, that just don't really like this portion of worship, right? So you, you try to show up a little bit late on Sunday morning, so you're driving down Court Street, and you know that singing coffee company is right off the road, and so you say, hey, babe, I'll buy you your favorite drink this morning because I love you so much, and then you miss the first two songs. <laughs> Well, man, I have news for you and a gentle correction. Uh, you, you better start liking it because when we all get to heaven, there's going to be a lot of singing and not a lot of singing coffee company. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, in invoking emotion, good and bad, isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I do want to caution you, church, uh, because sometimes through our emotions, we become the sole recipients of our worship. We become the sole purpose of why we worship, and that's something that's incorrect here. And uh, when, when in reality, we don't sing because it's been a bad week. We sing because we serve a God that is good even when it's been a bad week. We, we sing because God is good even when we have had a bad week. And, and I think that's so important for us, church. And, and just because the band plays songs that you don't like or in a way that's not George Strait or, or whatever the case may be, <laughs> doesn't, and I love George Strait, okay? He did a cover of a Ray, like that guy's my dude. But that doesn't mean that God deserves any less from us in our worship just because we're not feeling it there. When we, wor we worship the gift, or don't worship the gift, worship the giver. And that's important. And, he, and here, here's something here that's, that's just for free church, and, I, and I, I want you to grasp this because we've been lied to in the world. And, and when we live solely day by day trying to give God glory based off of how we feel, we become the sole recipients of our worship. And it's wrong, church. And, 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 and ultimately, we're, we're going to end up in a ditch. <laughs> our, our, our emotions are fleeting. Our hearts are deceiving to us. Scripture tells us this, and, 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 and regardless of how you feel on any given day, God is still the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. And so we worship him and him alone and not through our emotions because they're fleeting. We worship the giver and not the gift. And that's not to say, hear me, that's not to say emotions are bad because emotions play a really important role in worship and how we see God. So hear me say this. This is important. It's a perspective issue. That we worship, we cannot worship the gift of emotion. We worship the giver who is God and who is perfect always. God reveals himself through song. Our response is to sing because he is good to us. But that's not where worship ends. The second way that God reveals himself is through the church. God reveals himself through his body, right? And, and when you love your church, you respond to the revelation that God loved us enough to send his son to pay the price for us to have relationship with God and thus to establish his church here through Jesus Christ, right? Through, to establish this body, crossroads, to establish, and if you think about it, there are thousands and thousands of other communities that are meeting right now at the same time that we are for the same purpose and the same mission. Jesus came to establish his church on earth here, and it's Good. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22 says, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone 
in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord. When we see that we are embodying Jesus, church, we respond to the goodness of God by loving the church. And, and it's good, right? And through loving the church, we look ahead to when we're reunited with God, when he returns to perfect us and to restore all of us back to himself. One of my favorite things about our community here at Crossroads is that people like to say that we're a family, right? Like there, there, there are people here in this room right now that have tried to go to church in different places and have only felt welcome when they walked into those doors over there. And, and, and that's incredible. And, 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 when, uh, and I love that about this church. And some of you know what I'm talking about, right? When the body, the church works the way that it's supposed to, we lean on each other when times get hard. We support each other. We correct each other. Uh, and may maybe we give because the ministry is fruitful and because we know that everything that God has given us is already his to begin with, right? And, 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 and because we believe that everything that we have is his, all these things feel good to be a part of a ministry and a community. But sometimes it's not that easy, Am I right? Like, like maybe this is your ninth time meeting Pastor Marcus, and in those nine times, he's called you 12 different names. <laughs> maybe. I don't think he's in here, so I got away with that one. Uh, <laughs> or, or, or maybe your, your grow group isn't everything that you dreamed it would be, right? And, and it's difficult, and there's people in there that stink or whatever. Uh, <laughs> or or maybe, maybe you texted Pastor Roy while he was playing Fortnite, and he forgot to get back with you, uh, and everybody over the age of 45 missed that joke completely, but that's okay. <laughs> Sometimes loving and being a part of the body, of the body of Christ, of the church, invokes bad emotion, right? We feel lonely sometimes, or uh, we feel like we aren't being valued. We feel like our opinions aren't heard or valued. And church, I say this as gently and as lovingly as I possibly can. The church doesn't exist to make you feel good. The church does not exist to make you feel good. The church exists to glorify a God that is worthy of every single thing that we do in this community. And it's good, church. And it is so good for us. And when we choose to worship God through being a part of his body, only because it benefits us, then we become, once again, the sole beneficiaries of our worship. We become the point of our worship. And it's wrong in our emotions in this case will end up leading us into a ditch. Uh, instead, we're called to love the church and be a part of the church because God has been so faithful to us and because the only way to do life the way God intended it is in community. And we believe that. But, but we can't get wrapped up in the idea or the mindset that it, the church exists to satisfy us. It doesn't. Because then we worship the gift and not the giver. God reveals himself through his church and so our response is to be the body. But, but that's not where worship ends. And, and this is so good. The third way that I think and I see God revealing himself, and I think this is the most important one here, is through the word of God. And the Bible is the one perfect book that God has given us as a direct revelation of himself. Do you want to know what God is like? Read the Bible. <laughs> Do you want to know what Jesus is like? Go read the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, and, and, and watch these things, and watch how it changes your life uh, through reading that. Hebrews 4 says this, For the word of God is living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. When we hear the word of God, it convicts us, right? It, it challenges us. It changes us. At least it should. Uh, but, but oftentimes, reading requires discipline and requires a little bit of sacrifice. And so sometimes it falls on deaf ears. But church, there are a lot of Christians who say that they are following Christ and not in any way conforming their life to look like anything of the life of Jesus that we read about in the Bible. And, and, and this is important because if we are to call ourselves Christians, little Christs, we must conform our life to look like Jesus, and the only way to do that is through the revelation of himself through scripture. 
Uh, and, and that's so important, church. Uh, as I lose my spot here. And, and instead, we, we twist, right? And we use scripture um, to fit our personality, to fit, to, to fit our qualities, uh, to fit our abilities. And, and church, that's not obedience. That, that, that's not obedience. And, and obedience to the word of God is the best and purest form of worship that there is. And, and, and this is the hardest piece, and I get it. I, I get it because I struggle with you, and I labor with you in this obedience. But, but there is nothing that God desires more than for his children, us, to be obedient to his word. There's nothing he desires more in that way. And, and parents, maybe, man, maybe you're frustrated that your kids aren't being obedient. And, and, and I say this lovingly, but maybe, may, maybe it's because you aren't modeling obedience to the, the father in your home that they cannot see. And, and if you don't value obedience to the father, then your children will not value obedience to you as an imperfect father and a perfect mother. But we are called to be obedient to a perfect God and a perfect father. Church, this is important. And I know this kind of hurts. And I know this is like, oh, Roy's kind of kicking us here. And, but hear me, it's important. And there's good news coming, I promise. <laughs> uh, when we choose to be disobedient, we become the sole reason that we worship. Instead, we should read the word of God. And worship through the reading of the word of God because it gives us the most perfect glimpse of who God is. What I'm suggesting, church, is that we recognize the uniqueness and the perfection of the word of God. And that we grow in respect and appreciation for God's flawless revelation. Whenever we read or hear the word of God, we should do so carefully, reverently, and fearfully. One of my favorite things, we started uh, this thing with some of my team and, um, and some of my friends, and it's called Tuesday Night BS, and it's exactly the Tuesday Night Bible Study, and we have rehearsal on Tuesday night. By the way, like, this team is incredible. Uh, this worship team is incredible. Um, none of them... None of them get paid to do this, um, and, and the team in the back uh, are so faithful. Everybody uh, is volunteers, and they lead so faithfully. And, and so some of the guys, we gathered together after Tuesday nights, and we decided, hey, let's go to McDonald's, and we're going to read the Bible in public. So we've been reading through the Gospel of John together in McDonald's. People look at us funny. Uh, we're shoving chicken nuggets in our mouth as we read. Uh, and it's awesome, right? And, but in, in that... Uh, we also committed to reading throughout the week, and um, and it's awesome. And 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 here's the kicker here, right? Um, there needs to be because of the fact that we it's not natural for us to read. There needs to be something there that keeps us going. So we hold each other accountable. So when we read, we text each other. We say, "Hey, I read," um, and that's our accountability. And if we don't text, well, then we have to send a workout video by the end of the week. And our workout video is 20 squats, 20 sit-ups, 20 push-ups. It's not that hard. We have fun with it. It's really funny. We have, like, you don't want to see our Facebook messages. Um, and, uh, and, and it's awesome, right? And if we don't send that message, well, then we have to buy each other McDonald's the next week because we didn't work out. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but it's awesome, right? And we've gone through Ephesians. We've gone through the Johns. And, and, and it's working. Um, and we're building up each other and worshiping throughout the week to do this. I saw a post by Rachel Kalk. Um, this week um, that's challenging the ladies in our church to read. Ladies, I would encourage you to hold each other accountable and to read. Um, and and maybe, maybe you're struggling here because, hey, same. I struggle to read the Word of God. I struggle to worship in this way because, quite frankly, sometimes it's not as fun <laughs> and it's not as easy. Uh, but, but I would encourage you to do this. And here's the thing. Five minutes for the next week. If you can read the word of God for five minutes for the next week and you do not see significant change in your life this week, I will buy you Whataburger for the next week. Uh, <laughs> you, you have my word. Uh, read the Bible for the word of God for five minutes a day for this next week and see how it changes your life. And it will. That's right. So let's keep going here. God reveals himself through his word and our response is to be obedient. But that's not where worship ends. And here's the reality, church. Everyone worships something. We worship our financial status, right? And everything that we do lends itself to climbing to the next rung in the ladder. Or we worship our image and what people perceive about us. 
right? So everything that we do lends itself toward what our homeboys think about us or how our classmates or our teammates, our coworkers, or even our pastors think about us. Or, or, or we worship our jobs and our hobbies, or we worship our families and our children, or we worship the Dallas Cowboys, and I struggle with you there too. Uh, but <coughs> everyone worships something. And a good way to tell what you truly worship is by evaluating where your mind goes when you begin to daydream. Uh, and, and hear me, this is, this is important because, because having dreams and aspirations and goals and passions aren't a bad thing. In fact, we serve a God that gives us these things. And, and, and that's important. But, but this is the perspective change that we need to make, church, because when reaching those things becomes more important than worshiping the giver of these things, we get in trouble. And we miss the point. And ultimately, worshiping God requires more sacrifice than receiving good things that make us feel good. Romans 12 says this, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Romans says we are to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, not conforming to the patterns of this world, but through the renewing of our mind. If you truly want to experience real worship, church, you have to get back to the source. You have to get back to the start. And it has to all be about him and less about you every single day. The world has lied to us and made us think that every moment of every day is all about you and where you're going and what you're doing and what makes you feel good. But church, I want to challenge us. Let's be a church that instead says every day is about being obedient to God, seeing where what he's doing and taking action, seeing where he's going and going and doing what is holy and pleasing to the Father. Because life is too short and God is too perfect, gracious, and powerful to go any day with making ourselves the sole recipients of worship. God, Church, it, eternity is much closer than you think. And in eternity, we will worship forever and ever and ever, joining with all of creation, singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And it's going to be beautiful in languages that we've never heard. And, 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 and here at Crossroads, we take eternity very seriously. And I believe that it starts with worship. With worship of a true and good and perfect God and not ourselves, not our emotions, not things that are fleeting, etc. And so, it, it, church, it's time to believe the Bible and what it says. It, it, it's time to love Jesus and love those that he loves. It, it, maybe you need to sing like you have never sung before. Or maybe you need to get involved and be a part of what the church, the body of Christ, that's us here at Crossroads, is doing here in this community. Or maybe you need to quit talking about religion and, and instead submit yourself to the word of God and conform your life to that of Jesus and not of the world. Now, I don't know where you're at. And everyone worships something. But it doesn't end there. And maybe you're struggling this morning and, and you've lived a life uh, seeking to worship yourself. Or, or maybe even you've lived a life that's seeking to, uh, men, and I speak directly to you here, maybe you've lived a life that only seeks to provide. And, and while that's noble, hear me, that's noble. And it's good and God commands us that. We cannot simply only worship the, the gift here. We have to get back to the start and worship the giver. I want to encourage you this morning. I'm going to get ready to pray. And, and, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask every head bowed, every eye closed. And if you struggle this morning, and you say, man, Roy, I've, I've maybe never worshipped anything but myself, or anything other than money, or anything other than something else in my life, and I want to worship something that is perfect, that is true, that isn't fleeting, but that is near to me, and I would love to see your hand raised this morning. If that's you, raise your hand. I see you, I see you. I see you, I see you.
Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church. We trust this message enriched your life in some way. For more information, visit us on the web at www.crossroadsc.com. Or if you're in the area, come by and visit us on a Sunday morning at 8.30, 10, or 11.30 a.m. Crossroads Church, we're bringing a real God to real people.